Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a brand new video by myself, Mr. Feudal. So, today we're going to be looking at how to rent a server through a company called Blue Fang Solutions for Life is Feudal Your Own, or as you can see on screen, any variety of game here. They've recently just updated with uh, Rend servers, which is a game that I'm potentially want to go into. But anyway, let's go into Life is Feudal. Now, you can go to the shop and go to game servers. As soon as you go into game servers, if you want Life is Feudal your own, it's usually on the second line, bottom right, here it is, Life is Feudal, from 14.99. now that's just the base price, right? So, the first thing you're going to set up is, how many slots do you want? Do you want 1 to 16, 1 to 32, or 1 to 64? Essentially, forget about the 1, do you want 16, 32, or 64? Do you want a quarter, half, or a full server, completely, right? Data center, choose this for your, uh, wherever you are. In the world, for me, it would usually be London. Uh, if you're in Miami, it would be Miami. If you were in Germany, it would be Dusseldorf. So yeah, just pick the one that's closest to you. So I'm gonna go for London. And payment term, you can choose this by monthly or quarterly. There's a 5% off uh, discount here, but I usually go for monthly. This is where you put your server name in. So this is where your server will appear on the live map. So when you go into Life is Feudal Your Own and you join a world, this is the server name that you're looking for. The best way to usually set up your server is, is it based in the Europe? Is it based in the UK? Is it based in the US? Is it North America? The best way to do things is to do little square brackets, UK or EU, NA, US, etc. So you can do it that way and that's a really good way of filtering out servers. Admin password, this is going to be the password for uh, your GM command, right? So, see when you do forward slash GM space, this is the password that will be set for your GM, your game master, your admin password. Now, if you want a server password, if you want to whitelist the server and give the password to specific people who apply to the thing, who apply to your server, you can give it a password here and filter out people so you don't have griefers or people who break rules and stuff like that. Then you have silver support, which is basically just quicker support. You don't have to wait as long. You get a wee bit more priority, stuff like that. You can do that for an extra $10. High CPU priority, again, this gives them above normal priority for CPU usage, so it'll run a wee bit smoother. I usually just click yes onto this. When you go to do this and finish it all off, click add to cart. Now I've already got a game server set up, just go through the usual process of do you want to use a card, do you want to use a visa, do you want to use PayPal? They are PayPal uh, secure, so you can do it that way. So yeah, as soon as you do that, you can go to my account, I'm just going to log in. And you'll see an overseer panel. So if I go back to this, the, the very front page here, you'll be given an overseer panel 2.0. Now this is where you manage your server, right? So you click on that, wait for that, and it's a, it's a WordPress backend. So this is my server right here. I'm going to click on dashboard. I'm going to log in. And when you log in, you're given your dashboard. This is basically your CPU usage, your memory usage, and all the detailed information that you're going to actually need. Your file manager, your FTP information, and because right, you don't need to update the server itself. The game server updates. The version is always going to be the latest. Now, you can validate this and do a Steam update. This is only for when Life is Fe the, the the devs of Life is Feudal actually release an update for the, the server itself, or for Life is Feudal your own. Now, first off, before you even start up your your uh, your server, what you want to do is you want to go into your file manager. Now, when you're in your file manager, you want to go to config. This is where we're going to set up the server details. Now, you'll see config, VDF, and world, uh, world 6 XML. This might be a wee bit different for you. It might be world 12, it might be world 1, it might be world 20. Who knows? Right click on the world number, right? And then click edit. As soon as you do that, you're going to open up an XML file. This XML file is going to be basically all of the settings that you need for your server. Okay. So you've got ID6. Do not touch this. You've got your server name, which you set up already in the when you bought the server. This is the password. This is what will happen. This is what the password will be if you whitelisted your server. 
admin password that is going to be the admin password you set up for your life is feudal your own now mode sandbox that's not working it says it right there not working it's going to be sandbox by default just leave it as that is private one will make sure it's not on the server browser it's not on the master server list so if you want it private it can be privated is active is one that is for internal use as it says right there it must be one in order for it to work now the next point we go to is the skill status multiplier this is your skill multiplier so i have mine set for 45 you can go from a range of 0 0.1 to 100 100 being the easiest and 0 0.01 being the most difficult next we have the skill cap now we have three group sets right here and it kind of tells you right here how to edit them right so the first one is your crafting skills your or your or your crafting group I've got this set to 1,200, so every player in my server will only have a maximum skill cap of 1,200 in their crafting trees. Group set number two is your combat, so I've set that quite low, I've set that to 800. That means everybody will have to take a more refined approach to the way that they actually fight. If you want to set it to 3,000 and let them do everything, you can do that. You can set it to a range of 200, which will make it really, really difficult. Now, I would recommend if you want, um, when you set up your server, if you want people to be specific in what they take in terms of combat roles, I would set it to roughly 400 if you want to make it, like, everybody unique. Maybe there'll be uh, a couple archers, a couple infantry, and a couple lancers, and that'll be really, really helpful if you want them all to have a specific line of combat. The third group set we have is the minor skills. The minor skills are not really necessary for like clamping down on. Leave it at 3000. Nobody's going to really use, you know, minor skills. That minor skills are like general actions, authority, um, running, uh, swimming, stuff like that. Okay, next part is terraforming speed. Now I've got this set to 5. Now the 5 increments by times 10 so each time that you mine a tunnel in my server you're going to be given 50 rock you're going to give 50 iron ore silver ore gold ore copper ore now you can set this between 0.1 and 5 5 being the most and 0.1 being the hardest and most like least amount that you're going to be given back in terms of tunneling the next point is crafting period seconds for one crafting tick a burning fuel heating an object the lower this is the quicker the burn rate the higher this is the slower the burn rate okay animal bf period now this is basically the minutes between breeding how how fast that they age as well now set this to 120 if you want people to hold animals for at least a day make it a wee bit higher if you want them to have a, a longer breeding period, a longer life period as well. So, the, the lower it is, the quicker they breed, the quicker they die. The higher it is, the longer they breed, and the longer they live. Now, you're probably asking, what's the point of having a really low BF period? Well, some people like having stuff made fairly quickly, and it's for that reason only. Animal count. This is how many animals that will appear in your server. A hundred is the maximum. Only set this if you have, well, only set this really if you have high priority CPU. 75 is probably your best push if you don't have high priority CPU, but a hundred if you do. Okay, max players. This is going to be set automatically when you buy your server. If you chose 32, it will say 32 in here. If you chose 16, 16. If you chose the, the maximum, which is 64, it will say 64. Now the port is, you don't have to bother with this. This is only for direct uh, connection. Um, for example, better than you have a port plus one plus two, port numbers opened and routed if needed. For instance, if you set that number to 2600 or 26,000, you will need to have 20, uh, anyway. You don't have to really bother about this. You don't have to worry about the port, okay? Object decay rate. Now, that object decay rate is essentially how fast things decay, how fast things uh, deteriorate. For example, if you had this set to zero, everything would deteriorate at a very, very, very slow rate. If you set it to one, 
that is cut in half, so everything will start to decay a wee bit quicker, but you'll be able to save whatever's decaying. If you had it set to 10, it would rapidly decay, it would rapidly, really quickly fall to pieces and break away. Okay, movable max drop height meters. This is to negate floating items, right? So you can actually float things higher than 2.0, right? Or 2. Allows you to restrict the ability to players to hang logs, furniture and other movable objects in the air. So essentially what this does is it stops you building ladders. It stops you building floating ladders, okay? Random events, chance walks. So this is basically how often peaceful events will occur as you do passive things. For example, actions and things like this. I have this set to 0.1, okay, 0.01, I've got that set to that, so it's really low chance. The reason for this is snake bites are a pain in the ass and no one has to deal with them. They are a pain and it shouldn't be a thing that you have to deal with. Next, horse decay time in minutes. Now you've read up that in Life is Feudal MMO, that if after 30 minutes your horse will sit, after a further 30 minutes, it will disappear. This is the same thing. This is the same kind of setup. You can set this to zero so they'll never drop and run away, or you can set it to a stupid number like 3, 35,791. Now if you want people to be rather economic about how they deploy their horses and hide their horses, I would set this to, I don't know, 60. So after an hour, if they've not bundled their horse, it will sit down. After a further 60 minutes, it will disappear. Now that's a good thing because horses, animals do cause servers lag. Now if, if there's a lot of horses deployed in a world, it will cause lag. This is to negate that, okay? Homecoming drop. Set this to 1 or 0. 1 meaning if you homecome, if you, if you, um, if you pray for homecoming, and you've got things in your inventory, and this is set to one, you will drop a bag where you last prayed, which means if you're in an enemy territory, you've just raided them and you've come out with a bunch of loot, they've regrouped and they're now chasing you, you can't just do a uh, pray for homecoming, you will drop everything that you've got in your inventory. Everything that you have equipped to your player will stay on you, everything in your inventory will drop. Okay, so the next thing, the next fun thing is Judgment Hour. Now this is where you essentially set things up and remember what I told you? To have servers set in your local, lo well not local area, but your country or near enough your country. So for example, I'm in the UK, I would choose London so it works off of local time so I don't have to deal with anything, any problems. Start time is usually based on local server to lo where the server's based, the local server time. So if it was London, for example, right now, it would be 10 to 4 right now. So 20, 20 hundred or, you know, 8 o'clock would be in f 4 hours from now. So that works for me quite well. This is where you set the schedule, right? So each day has a zero beside it right now. That means that judgment hour is turned off. If it has a 1 inside the XML, it means it's turned on, and it will work with this time right here. Okay, so on Friday, at 8 o'clock, Judgment Hour will run, and this is the next part, the duration, this is set in real life minutes, to 120 minutes, or 2 hours. So, for 2 hours, on a Friday and a Saturday, at 8 o'clock, Judgment Hour will commence. So I hope this has helped you guys out a wee bit with basic setup of a Life is Feudal server. After you've done everything, you click save, you click close, you come out of this and you go back to your tab where your general information is set up, you click start and your server will now be on the master server list with all the settings that you've set up. For any additional information, leave a comment below, I'll try and help you guys out as much as possible. If you've got any details regarding this, the, the game console here, I can't give you that much information in this tutorial right now. For anybody who's wondering about custom maps, that will be a completely different uh, tutorial. For this tutorial, this has just been a basic setup of a Life is Feudal server through Bluefang. So guys, if this has helped you out any or at all, 
leave a like, it helps me out greatly. If you want to stay up to date with all the videos that I release or if I'm about to release, hit subscribe, remember to ring, ring the little bell and you'll stay up to date with all these tutorials. The next tutorial that will be on the line for myself and for you guys is going to be the custom maps, okay? So I'm going to show you guys how to work those, how to install those and how to work the live map. So guys, I'm Mr. Fudo, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. I'll see you all later.